The Magic Key to Success This magic key constitutes an irresistible power which all who will may use. It will unlock the door to riches, it will unlock the door to fame, and in many instances it will unlock the door to physical health. It will unlock the door to education and let you into the storehouse of all your latent ability. It will act as a passkey to any position in life for which you are fitted. Through the aid of this magic key, we have unlocked the secret doors to all of the world's great inventions. Through its magic powers, all of our great geniuses of the past have been developed. Suppose you are a laborer in a menial position and desire a better place in life. The magic key will help you attain it. It will unlock prison doors and turn human derelicts into useful, trustworthy human beings. It will turn failure into success and misery into happiness. You ask, what is this magic key? And I answer with one word, concentration. Concentration, in the sense in which it is here used, means the ability, through fixed habit and practice, to keep your mind on one subject until you have thoroughly familiarized yourself with that subject and mastered it. It means the ability to control your attention and focus it on a given problem until you have solved it. It means the ability to throw off the effects of habits which you wish to discard and the power to build new habits that are more to your liking. It means complete self-mastery. Stating it in another way, concentration is the ability to think as you wish to think, the ability to control your thoughts and direct them to a definite end, and the ability to organize your knowledge into a plan of action that is sound and workable. You can readily see that in concentrating your mind upon your definite chief aim in life, you must cover many closely related subjects which blend into each other and complete the main subject upon which you are concentrating. Ambition and desire are the chief factors which enter into the act of successful concentration. Without these factors, the magic key is useless, and the main reason why so few people make use of this key is that most people lack ambition and desire nothing in particular. Desire whatever you may, and if your desire is within reason, and if it is strong enough, the magic key of concentration will help you attain it. There are learned men of science who would have us believe that the wonderful power of prayer operates through the principle of concentration on the attainment of a deeply seated desire. Nothing was ever created by a human being which was not first created in the imagination, through desire, and then transformed into reality through concentration. Now, let us put the magic key to a test through the aid of a definite formula. First, you must put your foot on the neck of skepticism and doubt. No unbeliever ever enjoyed the benefits of this magic key. You must believe in the test that you are about to make. We will assume that you have thought something about becoming a successful writer, or a powerful public speaker, or a successful business executive, or an able financier. We will take public speaking as the subject of this test, but remember that you must follow instructions to the letter. Take a plain sheet of paper, ordinary letter size, and write on it the following. I am going to become a powerful public speaker because this will enable me to render the world useful service that is needed, and because it will yield me a financial return that will provide me with the necessary material things of life. I will concentrate my mind upon this desire for ten minutes daily, just before retiring at night and just after arising in the morning, for the purpose of determining just how I shall proceed to transform it into reality. I know that I can become a powerful and magnetic speaker, therefore I will permit nothing to interfere with my doing so. Signed. Sign this pledge, then proceed to do as you have pledged your word that you would do. Keep it up until the desired results have been realized. Now, when you come to do your concentrating, this is the way to go about it. Look ahead one, three, five, or even ten years and see yourself as the most powerful speaker of your time. See in your imagination an appropriate income. See yourself in your own home that you have purchased with the proceeds from your efforts as a speaker or lecturer. 
See yourself in possession of a nice bank account as a reserve for old age. See yourself as a person of influence due to your great ability as a public speaker. See yourself engaged in a life calling in which you will not fear the loss of your position. Paint this picture clearly through the powers of your imagination, and lo, it will soon become transformed into a beautiful picture of deeply seated desire. Use this desire as the chief object of your concentration and observe what happens. You now have the secret of the magic key. Do not underestimate the power of the magic key because it did not come to you clothed in mysticism or because it is described in language which all who will may understand. All great truths are simple in final analysis and easily understood. If they are not, they are not great truths. Use this magic key with intelligence and only for the attainment of worthy ends and it will bring you enduring happiness and success. Forget the mistakes you have made and the failures you have experienced. Quit living in the past, for do you not know that your yesterdays never return? Start all over again if your previous efforts have not turned out well and make the next five or ten years tell a story of success that will satisfy your most lofty ambitions. Make a name for yourself and render the world a great service through ambition, desire, and concentrated effort. The presence of any idea or thought in your consciousness tends to produce an associated feeling and to urge you to appropriate or corresponding action. Hold a deeply seated desire in your consciousness through the principle of concentration, and if you do it with full faith in its realization, your act attracts to your aid powers which the entire scientific world has failed to understand or explain with a reasonable hypothesis. When you become familiar with the powers of concentration, you will then understand the reason for choosing a definite chief aim as the first step in the attainment of enduring success. Concentrate your mind upon the attainment of the object of a deeply seated desire, and very soon you will become a lodestone that attracts, through the aid of forces which no man can explain, the necessary material counterparts of that desire a statement of fact which paves the way for the description of a principle which constitutes the most important part of this lesson. When two or more people ally themselves in a spirit of perfect harmony for the purpose of attaining a definite end, if that alliance is faithfully observed by all of whom it is composed, the alliance brings to each of those of whom it is composed power that is superhuman and seemingly irresistible in nature. Back of the foregoing statement is a law, the nature of which science has not yet determined. And it is this law that I have had in mind in connection with my repeated statements concerning the power of organized effort. In chemistry, we learn that two or more elements may be so compounded that the result is something entirely different in nature from any of the individual elements. For example, ordinary water, known in chemistry under the formula of H2O, is a compound consisting of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, but water is neither hydrogen nor oxygen. This marrying of elements creates an entirely different substance from that of either of its component parts. The same law through which this transformation of physical elements takes place may be responsible for the seemingly superhuman powers resulting from the alliance of two or more people in a perfect state of harmony and understanding for the attainment of a given end. Do you not see how it is possible so to combine the energy of two or more minds that the result will be a sort of composite mind which is totally different from the individual minds of which it consists? You have undoubtedly noticed the manner in which you are influenced while in the presence of other people. Some people inspire you with optimism and enthusiasm. Their very presence seems to stimulate your own mind to greater action. And this not only seems to be true, but it is true. You have noticed that the presence of others had a tendency to lower your vitality and depress you, a tendency which I can assure you was very real. What do you imagine could be the cause of these changes that come over us when we come within a certain range of other people, unless it is the change resulting from the blending or combining of their minds with our own? through the operation of a law that is not very well understood, but resembles, if in fact it is not the same law, 
the law through which the combining of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen produces water. I have no scientific basis for this hypothesis, but I have given it many years of serious thought, and always I come to the conclusion that it is at least a sound hypothesis. You need no proof, however, that the presence of some people inspires you, while the presence of others depresses you, as you know this to be a fact. Now it stands to reason that the person who inspires you and arouses your mind to a state of greater activity gives you more power to achieve while the person whose presence depresses you and lowers your vitality, or causes you to dissipate it in useless, disorganized thought, has just the opposite effect on you. You can understand this much without the aid of a hypothesis and without further proof than that which you have experienced time after time. Come back now to the original statement that, when two or more people ally themselves in a spirit of perfect harmony— for the purpose of attaining a definite end, if that alliance is faithfully observed by all of whom it is composed, the alliance brings to each of those of whom it is composed power that is superhuman and seemingly irresistible in nature. Study closely the emphasized part of the foregoing statement, in a spirit of perfect harmony, and faithfully observed by all of whom it is composed for there you will find the mental formula which, if not faithfully observed, destroys the effect of the whole. Great achievement will follow the systematic blending of two or more minds with a definite object in view. You can do it if you believe you can.